Hi, Joey. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can. How you doing? Hey, um, this is Daniel from Metal Temple. Um, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks for putting the time aside. Um, no you're, problem. You're in three bands now. Has the new year been particularly busy for you? Um, yes, I am in three bands right now. Yeah. Um, has the new year been particularly busy for you? Yeah, it has. Um... You know, mostly due to um, the the beginning of the year was just crazy because um, I was finishing up the Armored Saint record right around, you know, in January. Just really just kind of finishing up approving mixes and then, um, then getting it mastered and then so that was a little bit distracting and then also shooting the album cover uh, we had to do that uh, right around the same time so I kind of helped organize that whole thing so that was another that was another thing to do let alone the other the stuff I did with Motor Sister and trip to New York and we played in Brooklyn and shot a video and stuff so yeah it's been crazy very cool um yeah, you know, it's, it's my understanding that Ian's a massive fan of Motor Sister. He, he somehow got their old frontman to, what would you call it? Is it some kind of like a reunion or a reincarnation of Mother Superior? Um, well, I don't know. It's, you know, it's, a, it's different than Mother Superior. So I don't know if saying, calling it a reincarnation is really accurate or not. It's kind of its own animal, but um, you know, we're just uh, we're just kind of like a band, a bunch of friends who got together to not really form a band. We just got together to sort of celebrate the music of Mother Superior, and you know, sort of like in our little way, show the world what they've been missing. You know, I see. so uh, that's really all we started out to be, and. Now we have a record, and it's, now I'm doing press, and it's kind of weird, but that's really how it started. Sounds a little bit serendipitous to me. You know, I'm, I'm kind of curious, so how do members from Anthrax, you know, Fate's Warning, Armored Saint, White Zombie, and Mother Superior come together? <laughs> well, we're all friends. Uh, we've been friends for quite some time. Um, uh, John Tempesta, he's from the old school days with Anthrax, so he's known Scott forever. Um, I've been friends with Scott since, basically since, you know, the late, since the mid-80s. I mean, we've crossed paths several times just being in my coastal heavy metal bands at the time. Um, but uh, I became closer to Scott myself a little bit once John joined Anthrax and then during that time in the 90s and then when I played with them from 2004 to 2005 when I um, I filled in for Frank Bella when he left to play with Helmet I got closer to Scott and um, and, and Pearl and once they um, were together and my wife and I became friends with them and we just would see them socially we, you know then that, now we're just like friends they don't live that far from us and it's not uncommon for us to go to their house for dinner or for them to come over and swim in our pool you know not, on, a, on any weekend it's just we just became friends during that time in 2004 and it was during that time 2004 that Scott turned me on to Mother Superior um, I had never heard of them before um, but he turned me on to them because he had just discovered them a few years prior to that, having been in Henry Rollins' band, which is backing band. So he was kind of uh, newly discovered them for a couple of years and turned me on to them. And they were based in L.A. at that time, and I would go see them play live, and I was blown away. I thought they were a great band. They were right up my alley. Um, we're all kids from the 70s. We all grew up in the 70s. So for me, the stuff that I grew up listening to was was hard rock from the 70s. Anything, anything from the 70s was, it was stuff that I listened to. The Mother Superior had a real big influence in coming from that era. So to me, it was 
like, ah, oh, this is great. You know, this is like the kind of stuff I grew up on and what I listened to at home, basically. And quickly thereafter, I became friends with Jim Wilson and, and the bass player, Marcus. And I just became friends with them. And they were just great people, totally down to earth. We had a lot in common musically. We got along. We had a lot of common just in general about everything, life in general. And... Uh, and then I began working with them as an engineer. I, um, I mixed a few songs for Mother Superior on a couple of their records, and I mastered a few things for them. Um, and we just started up a friendship. So that's, we were just all friends, really. We, we still are friends. We're, this is how this happened. It just so happened that during Scott's 50th birthday, as you probably got the bio, says, and it's true, he just said, you know, I really miss this band, Mother Superior, and I, I would love, to, I would love to play some Mother Superior songs at my party, just just to jam a few songs. And you know, he, John, John Tempesta and myself were already going to the party anyway, because it was Scott's 50th birthday, and he invited us. But he just sort of dropped this thing on us, like, hey, I'm thinking about doing a jam. I want to play a bunch of Mother Superior songs, and Jim Wilson said he's into it and I said well shit I'm going anyway I'll just bring my beat <laughs> no. so that's how it all started and that's really the nucleus of it wow okay <laughs> that's 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 incredible um look the new album Ride is essentially a 12 covers of Mother Superior songs correct people who don't know it is yeah right. um, you know once once Scott, once, once Scott got, kind of got everybody on board and said, yeah, let's, let's have a jam at my house. And he invited, it was a small party, like maybe 20 people or something. Um, he went and made his, his list, his, his favorite list, his wish list of Mother Superior songs that he loved. And I'm sure when he first did it, it was probably like 20 songs long because they have something like eight records or something. It's, they have a lot of songs. So... He talked to Jim, and they kind of whittled it down to something more manageable, you know. And they came up with the 12 songs, and it's the same 12 songs that's on the record. So we learned 12 songs um, at home. We got together once before the party, and the minute we played the first song, we all sort of looked at each other, and we were like, wow, it was like, that was amazing. And we, it was it was like we had been a band like for a year already. It was just so strange. It was bizarre. Um, there was nothing to work out, nothing to do. It was like everything fell into place and totally gelled with everything. And it was awesome. So um, that's how, the, that's how that, the material came up. And we just went and played the, ship, played the party. That was literally like the day after we practiced or something. And, and it was super, super loose. I mean, we just, everyone was drinking beer and just hanging out. And we, we played in there. He had this cool little jam room. And we just played in there. And it was so loud in there and just amazing. It was just <laughs> so much fun. It was just so much fun, you know. And for us, it's like, you know, like, I equate it to, like, one of my favorite, like, Mother Superior is one of those bands like King's X, you know, like one of my favorite bands that just never, that not that many people know about, you know, and and so I find myself playing these songs with the guy that wrote these songs and the guy that's in the band, and, and it's almost like being in a band, like having Angus Young call you and say, hey, I'm going to play some ACDC songs, you want to come play with me? And we go, fuck yeah, of course I do, you know. And wow. so it's similar to that, you know, in, in that way. And so it was just so much fun, you know. It was really just such a blast. Yeah, I mean, you, you say that you're playing with uh, one of the original band's founding members, playing his songs yeah. with him. Does Is that not yeah. daunting at all? Well, not really. If you know Jim, if you get to know Jim, he's like one of the most, well, he was, for one, first thing, he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And then second of all, he's the most easygoing, like, laid back, like, such a non, non-drama, non just, he's so easy, an easy person. So, he's just, like, he's just, he's sort of, like, grateful that we're, that we're playing his songs with him. That's what, that's his attitude. And, but we're like, dude, we're like fanboys right now. 
don't understand. <laughs> So the whole thing was just really, it was just a really smooth and streamlined experience. Yeah, I mean, it's, you can't get more organic than, than how this thing came about. I mean, mm. on, the sur- on the outside surface, if you don't know the inside story, some people, they, they, grab, it, they grab a word like... Super like group. Super group. Yeah. Yeah, they grab that word because it's what it looks like on the outside and it's the only way they know how to peg it. But this isn't a super group. This isn't what we did. This isn't why we did this. It's not how we did it. It truly is just like, these are the same people we hang out with on any given weekend. It just so happens that one of the guys is on a band that we all think is amazing and then the rest of the world has never heard before. So our intention was like, let's just have fun with this. Now, it, got, it changed a little bit when a record label got word of it and they said well shit this is a really cool idea like on our on, 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 I guess from a label perspective they're like maybe they view it as that more of a super group or something that's interesting it does if you know the story it's it, it does it's a cool interesting story and it's not a manufactured thing it truly is an organic thing so once that came into play we had to be a little bit careful about that you know not like not say to ourselves, okay, now we have a record label interested in, in what we did and, and they want us to redo, replay these songs and remarket it to this other package. We didn't want to go in and say, and, and try to do this, you know, make it slick, make it a high production value, spend weeks and weeks and weeks recording it and doing all these things to make it something, you know, uh, like palatable maybe for everybody. We said to ourselves, if we do this, we're going to do it in the same way that we did the party. So that meant record it live, no overdubs. Uh, Everybody plays together in the same room. And we did the whole thing in two days. Um, And we had to recapture that that vibe of of the party. So, I mean, we even invited friends to the studio. We had people sitting literally in the, not in the control room, but in the, the actual drum room that we were all in there were friends in there who who brought coolers of beer I mean it it, it was that kind of a vibe again so we had to do that in order to keep it real it sounds like the whole thing was done in just one take yeah I mean I'm not going to lie to you it wasn't like first take done it was uh, but it was I would say no more than three takes Uh, some, some of the takes we ended up using on the record were the first take, but some of them were, at most, the third take. But it wasn't like we spent hours, Mm. you know, trying to get the track right where nobody makes a mistake. Uh, It's not a perfect, they're not perfect. There's some little things in there if you were to analyze it, but it's, it doesn't matter. The the vibe of of the music and the songs come through and that was the most important thing of us. Yeah, I suppose that's that. The that vibe is gonna come out if you do it in two days instead of spending you know weeks or months like some other bands do to try and get it sounding as crisp and pure as possible. Yeah, I mean you know, it, you you. I think the intention is obvious, and and the energy and the vibe. You accept it for what it is. If you if you see a package that's sparkly and it looks beautiful and it's polished. You, you know what to expect from it, but if you see something or you hear something and it's, it is what it is, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's 
not making any pretenses, but it is what it is. And for that in itself, it's just as beautiful and just as great. Yeah, okay, this is obviously something that you've all been really excited to do. Was this album just a one-time thing, or and where are you looking to move forward with it after this album? Yeah, we, we hadn't thought about this at all um, until recently, because once we started doing press, people started asking that uh, same question. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we were, we really weren't thinking about it at all, to be honest with you, but um, up, up until recently, we started talking about it. In fact, we went to New York together as a band. It was cool, because we, we all took a trip together, and we were all in New York doing a bunch of press, and we played our first real show on a stage in Brooklyn a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and it was during that time we were together that we we decided that we were going to um, we were going to experiment and see what happens. We won't work, so we decided to start writing together as a band, as a unit, and see what happens, see where it goes. I'm not making any promises to anybody, but we decided that since we all get along so well and we, we're all on the same page musically and we know what this is and we know what it should be and shouldn't be, we think we can write some killer songs together. So Jim's already got a couple of riffs that he showed us and we were like, oh, that's great. You know, I can't wait to start playing that. So um, we're going we're gonna to write some songs, see what happens in the future. Probably over the next, to be honest with you, over the next six months or so, we're probably going to start doing that um, in between our busy schedules and other things. And, um, I mean, I think we'd all love to do another record. And maybe it'll be all originals. Maybe it'll be 75% originals and 25% more other Mother Superior songs. I don't know. I mean, we, we haven't got that far, but we plan on working together as a unit. Hmm. Well, I mean, the first album sort of happened so fast. So I think it'd be pretty cool if the second one was just, you know, just as instantaneous. Yeah, I mean, you're you're right. I mean, I think that uh, in keeping with the spirit of it, even when we, if we get to a point where we've written a bunch of songs, now now we're just we're sort of, sort of talking off the top of our heads. But um, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that would be a great idea to just go in and ba basically do it the same way, you know, just bang them out. But you know, play this, rehearse the songs a few times, bang them out. Gotcha. Well, it must be pretty hard to pick uh, twelve tracks out of an entire discography. But what are your personal favorites? Um. <clears throat> well. on the side, um, I'm curious about the bands that you are in still. Now, Fate's Warning came out with their first album in nine years in 2013. I was positively thrilled with that release, by the way. What's going on now in the Fate's Warning house? Um, we are uh, back to the writing table. So we started writing for a new record. That's good news. And, yeah, we are writing for a new record. We'll see um, how that goes. It's usually kind of a slow process so I don't know when we'll be in the studio there's some loose talk about maybe getting some live dates in the fall of this year but 
it's not confirmed yet, so I can't say whether that's a yay or a nay. Right. So that's what's going on with Fates. Okay, as for Armored Sin, you're of course releasing a new album this year. Um, five years since La Raza, any insight you could offer to the new album? Um, I, I, I get asked, everyone wants to know, and it's, it's like totally unbiased, I mean it's, it's totally biased of me, coming from me, but, um, and I'm so close to it, so it's hard for me to like, it's a little bit hard to be objective, but, um, you know, I, I, I just think that like um, we we really made an effort to expand our songwriting skills on this one. Um, so um, as a result, uh, we didn't we just wanted to just let let things live as they were and not be concerned about how long the songs are and what the arrangement is. You know, does it, does it fit like this into this mold or that mold? So um, as a result, some of the Song on this record is rather important, especially for us. Um, and on the songwriting part, you know, we just really tried to make this as we just really wanted to push the envelope and, and really challenge ourselves and, and make things, I don't know, just bigger. So to me, the record just sounds massive. It's just kind of, there's a lot of there's a lot of overdubs. There's a lot of parts. There's a lot going on. There's at times it's just this complete wall of sound, um, and it just sounds really epic to me. It just sounds ginormous. I don't know how else to explain it. There's a couple songs that are rockers, and then a couple songs that are just super melodic. Um, so it's got a little bit of a little bit of everything again. Um, it's kind of you know when I when I think about our record, and people ask me about it all the time. Every record we make is always different from the one previous. Um, I don't think we've ever made the same record twice. So this one is really no exception. It's just, it's just going, it's like La Raza, but on 11. It just goes further. Wow. Um, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> but there's, you know, for, for the old school fans, there are some elements of it that are reminiscent some of the grooves are super reminiscent of things we've done in the past and are familiar with some of the songs that maybe we're known for. So um, that's, I mean, that's, a, that's an exciting thing for me to, to uh, be able to bring back to. Um, I know that a lot of our fans, uh, you know, they want us to remake March of the Saint or they want us to rewrite Symbol of Salvation and it's just not going to happen. You know, we're not, we're not interested in going back. We only want to go forward, you know. But I also have to recognize that there's some things about some things about our songs and our music that we've done in our past that really that people have um, come to associate with us. So I, I always want to. I don't ever want to abandon that completely, you know. So. Um, I don't know. We're, we're super, super proud of this record, and I can't wait for it to come out. Um, we're really excited about it. I'm pretty sure we can't wait either. Well, look, that basically uh, wraps it up. Um, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, I wish you well, and I hope Murder System makes an impact. Are there any last words you'd like to leave? Cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for the time. Cool. All right. Well, good luck. Bye-bye.